hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in today's video we'll be seeing about the introduction of upper limb and lower limb so basically the fore limb fore limb and hind limb these are the pairs of limbs in all the quadrupeds so these were basically designed or evolved for weight bearing and for locomotion but in human being the function of weight bearing is taken over lower limb therefore upper limb are free and have great manipulative skills in human being lower limb has taken the weight bearing and upper limb are free and have so now uh, before getting deep into this you should know about the axial and appendicular skeleton basically the axial skeleton are the bones of your head neck thorax and back okay and appendicular are the bones of shoulder pelvis and limbs appendicular are shoulder pelvis limbs and axial skeleton is head neck your chest back so basically if this is the body this head neck chest and also back the green one is our axial skeleton okay green one is axial skeleton and the remaining this upper limb lower limb are the appendicular one now each limb whether it is upper limb or lower limb it is made up of on a same basic principles okay so first we have uh, every limb they have a basal segment basal segment and uh, which is also known as girdle okay and we have free part free part now what is the purpose of telling this this girdle what it does is this girdle attaches the appendicular skeleton to the axial skeleton so basically girdle will be this part or and this part in upper limb this part in lower limb this part and in free part free part is divided into proximal middle and distal part distal part so basically every limb has a girdle and a free part in free part it is again divided into proximal middle and distal now in upper limb now you notice here how upper limb and lower limb they are made up of on the same basic pattern they are made on same basic pattern in upper limb we have shoulder girdle okay shoulder sh shoulder girdle and our proximal part is arm our middle part is forearm and our distal part is hand in lower limb we have hip girdle thigh thigh part then we have leg and foot okay this much is clear now based on the these areas based on these areas we will be, we'll be seeing about the bones of each region so the shoulder girdle in upper limb okay shoulder girdle is made up of clavicle and scapula arm is made up of humerus forearm 
we have two bones in forearm that is the radius and ulna and in hand hand contains total of 27 bones okay in which eight are carpal bones five metacarpal and 14 phalanges Here you can have a look on the diagram, the clavicle, scapula, these makes the shoulder girdle. Then we have in arm region, we have humerus. In forearm region, we have two bones, radius and ulna. And in hand, we have eight carpal bones, uh, five metacarpal bones and 14 phalanges. In all these four digits, we have... Uh, three three phalanges and in thumb we have only two phalanges likewise in lower limb in upper limb we saw these many bones in lower limb we have in hip girdle we have a pelvic bone which is composed of which is a fused bone of three bones ilium ischium and pubis okay this is hip girdle. Then in thigh region we have femur. In leg region we have two bones. Again here in leg region we have two bones. In forearm also we had two bones. So upper limb, limb is homologous to lower limb. In leg we have two bones that is tibia. And fibula. In foot, we have 26 bones. Okay. We have 7 tarsal bones. 7 tarsal bones. 5 metatarsal. And again 14 phalanges. In the big toe, we have only two phalanx and in all the other toes, we have three phalanx. <coughs> now that we are done with the bones, intro part, let's focus on the joints involved in upper limb and lower limb. In upper limb, in upper limb, we have joints. First one is our shoulder joint, which is also known as glenohumeral joint because it is made up of glenoid fossa of scapula and humerus bone. It is also known as scapulohumeral joint. Scapulohumeral joint. Then we have elbow joint which is made up of the distal part of humerus and proximal part of uh, forearm bones. Then we have radio ulnar joint. Now these two bones which are present in form, forearm, they form two, two radio ulnar joint. One is proximal radio ulnar joint and distal radio ulnar joint then we have the wrist joint and in hand we have many joints they are inter carpal joints these are the joints which are formed between the eight carpal bones intercarpal joints then we have carpo metacarpal joint carpometacarpal joints when carpal bones they uh, are joined to metacarpal bo joint metacarpal bones the, those are known as carpometacarpal joints now we'll be seeing all these in diagram as well then we have metacarpophalangeal joint metacarpophalangeal joint and lastly we have interphalangeal 
phalangeal joints joints between the phalanx these are also proximal and distal in all the digits except our thumb likewise in lower limb we have hip joint okay we have first one hip joint then we have knee joint same as elbow joint then we have tibio fibular joint which is again made by two bones of the leg tibia and fibula and they are proximal and distal two joints proximal tibio fibular joint and distal tibio fibular joint then we have ankle joint ankle joint then we have subtalar subtalar joint these are between the tarsal bones the joint between the tarsal jo tarsal bones is known as subtalar joint then we have tarso metatarsal tarso metatarsal joint when tarsal bones meet the metatarsals of the foot they form tarso metatarsal joint then we have metatarso phalangeal joint again in foot we have inter phalangeal joints here you can see all the bones and the joints bones we have seen earlier so this is our shoulder joint which is also known as glenohumeral joint made by the uh, glenoid fossa of scapula and head of humerus this is our elbow joint which is made up of distal part of our humerus and proximal part of radius and ulna this is our wrist joint which is made up of uh, forearm bones and the carpal bones and for the joints of hand okay here uh, the carpal you can see clearly the carpal bones these are the carpal bones these are the metacarpal bones and phalanges so the joint between each carpal bone is known as intercarpal joints then when carpals and metacarpal this joints this 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 and these are carpo metacarpal joints and these are the metacarpal and these are the phalanges so this joint between them is metacarpo phalangeal joints and the joints between the each phalanx each phal each phalanx is inter phalangeal joints so in thumb we have only one inter phalangeal joint in other digits we have proximal this is proximal and this is distal inter phalangeal joints pip and dip let's have a look on the lower limb diagram we have hip bone hip girdle this is the hip girdle then we have femur in the thigh region okay first regions hip girdle thigh leg and foot now bones hip bone femur then we also have a small bone in the thigh region that is in the distal thigh region patella in leg we have tibia and fibula and in foot we have tarsal metatarsal and phalanges now joints coming up to the joints this this joint which forms here is hip joint then this joint made from the distal part of femur and tibia a proximal part of tibia is knee joint then here tibio fibular joint proximal tibio fibular joint and distal tibio fibular joint and joints of foot we have subtalar joints which are uh, which are the joints between the tarsal bones 
देन वी हैव टारसो मेटाटारसल जॉइन दीज आर दी मेटाटारसल फाइव मेटाटारसल दीज जॉइंट आर टारसो मेटाटारसल जॉइंट देन वी हैव मेटाटारसो फेलेंजियल जॉइंट ईच ईच डिजिट अगेन ईच टो हियर हैज थ्री फैलिंग्स एक्सेप्ट आर टो टो हैज ओनली वन इंटर फेलेंजियल जॉइंट वेर एज अदर टोज वी हैव proximal and distal and in interphalangeal joints okay that's it for today's video in upcoming videos we will be learning about each part of each limb upper limb and lower limb okay again here if we notice that uh, the pattern of the limb basic principle of limb is same we have girdle and free part which is which is divided into proximal middle and distal also if we look at the bones we have in arm we have only one bone in thigh we have one bone in forearm we have two bones in leg we have two bones then in hand and foot if we compare we have carpal bones and tarsal bones metacarpal and phalanges are same also if we compare the joints we have same pattern of joints shoulder joint in upper limb and hip joint in lower limb elbow joint in upper limb and knee joint radio ulnar joint which are two proximal and distal we have tibio fibular joint here wrist joint ankle joint then all these joints of hand and the joints of foot they are similar